So this week's title is called Oh, don't lose sight. So how this came about. Um, this week, I feel what God has been showing me is that I need to di- redirect my mind to what matters in my current season and letting go of things that I have no control over, which can be a strong area for me as well because I may think that, of course, this shouldn't be this way, right? Or the way the way is not right. But then I forget that God has placed people, situations, and so on where they are, and it's not my place to try and place my own thoughts and feelings in the middle of it. I have noticed that God has been training and strengthening me to become a stronger leader. Not only a strong, only stronger, but better as well to learn how to handle any kind of situation that comes my way. And, you know, this week has been, you know, an interesting week, if you ask me. You know, um, a lot of things going on and there was a lot of things I had to correct in myself. Not only correct in myself, but also do things that, you know, may be out of my comfort zone, per se. And, you know, it was a good thing for me. And I appreciate that, you know, God showed me the correct way to how, on how to handle things and actually take care of my business of what I need to take care of. Not only does God want me to learn how to handle situations, but wants me to go to him so that I can learn and properly evaluate situations and solve them in the best appropriate way as what God has done. And what I mean by that is that, you know, a lot of times in, in, in the ministry, you know, the, people I'm, the main people that I go to majority of the time are pastors. And, you know, it's not a bad thing, but God is putting me in a season now where he knows that I can, I, I've learned enough to be able to observe and handle situations in the appropriate way that they're supposed to be done. And I can't always keep going to pastors and asking them to, you know, help me in a situation or always ask for advice. And sometimes, you know, what I realize is sometimes you have to take a risk, you know, and it's not, and that's the only way as a leader that you're going to actually learn is if you actually take a risk and if you make a mistake, then you make a mistake. If you do it right, then you do it right. But unless you make the mistake and try it out, then you'll never learn. You will never know or ever learn on your own on what it means to, you know, take accountability, take responsibility on what God has given you. So, at a certain point, you know, I can use God and God can use pastors as my reference point for a while. But at a certain point, you know, he needs me to come to him first. So he can strengthen me in all areas of my life. Through this season, God is showing me that no matter what, rather doing good or bad, there will be chiseling throughout the season. And it's up to me to bear the right fruit that comes out of it. I feel like nowadays people think that, like, you know, how I always say, you know, oh, this life isn't for me, or, you know, God, why did you do this to me, and this, that, and the third. But if you actually look at it from a perspective of, you know, yourself, and you evaluate yourself, you are the outcome of what is to come, right? You, what you do, how you do it, and what you, what you say, the thoughts, the mindset, and all these things is the fruit that will come out of the season that you're in. Not does this season only pertain to me, but what I realize is that it also falls under, it, how do I explain it? 
doesn't only pertain to me. It also pertains to the people in my household, right? Because if I don't do the right thing, if I don't, if I don't follow through bearing the good fruit, that can affect my own household, right? And when I say that, what I mean by that is, is that if I fail, that means I have failed not only myself, but I failed the others because I'm not putting God in the center of what I am supposed to be doing, which is my current season, focusing on my family and doing the things that I'm supposed to do, right? And so as a leader and who God appoints you to oversee and what you do is very critical because this will will determine the next season you walk into, right? So it was even it was even a comment on band when I made the when I made the post about you know the the apartment being fully furnished and everything. And Pastor Eugene posted in a comment, and she was like, you know, take care of the house and not only the house but the people that live there because that will determine your next season. So it's not like, you know, it's not rocket science, right? I'm learning how to handle people in different ways. Different people have different personalities. Different people have a different way of thinking and different people are on different different realms of the spectrum in the spiritual realm, right? So I have to learn to be able to evaluate that. I have to learn to be able to, you know, how do I explain it? I don't remember what the word is, but I have to learn to adjust if I need to adjust. So, you know, <clears throat> I have realized even though I may have the best intention for someone, if I'm not evaluating first or gaining facts first, and I bring something to, you know, pastor's attention or God for that matter, and if I'm told to correct on an area and advise on a matter, right, Mind you, this is based off of what I see, and this is what is based off of what I evaluated, but I didn't get facts first, right? That's the, that's the main thing, is you have to be able to gain the facts first, have to really, you know, examine the situation, and then, you know, go to pastors, and don't get me wrong, I messed up, and I did not evaluate a situation and when I did not evaluate the situation, it was not what I perceived it to be, right? And so, mind you, I, me personally, I made the mistake, and that's why I'm up here, is to, you know, tell you about the mistakes that I make, right? And so, it was a situation that I, you know, perceived that I may have thought that was wrong or whatever, and I was trying to have the best intention for someone, and what happened was, it ended up being nothing that what I have thought it, nothing I had what I have thought it would have been, and you know I brought it to pastors, and you know pastors basically corrected me on that area and told me that you know for future I need to evaluate the situation first. I have to gain all the facts first before I come to them with this because if they correct and advise in an area that I was such wrong in, right? And at that point, they're going after someone that did nothing wrong, right? And so, you know, that is something that I am learning as a leader and overseeing a household and also just, you know, becoming better as a leader is that I'm actually observing that now. And, you know, I take that into great consideration because at the end of the day, if I do that, and all of a sudden, someone else is in trouble for something that they didn't do. At that point, that's on my hands, right? And so, you know, evaluating first and observing and actually gaining facts first is very critical because it will determine how others turn out and also possibly what the motive is behind it, right? for a matter, an area. All right. 
these rules don't only apply in my spiritual, but in my personal life too. Is basically how I handle people, how I handle situations will determine my next chapter to choose. The choice is actually mine. And, you know, when it comes to my household, I am very, how to explain it? I want the best for everyone that lives with me, right? Um, and sometimes wanting the best for everyone doesn't mean that I have to be so, you know, spiritual-like, per se, right? I don't always have to, you know, be so like, oh, you guys got to make sure you do this. Well, of course, reading and praying is mandatory, right? That is, the, that is just the basics. But I have to learn to give grace in areas. I have to learn what people can take, what people can, you know, do, and I can't just be like, because of something that I, like I told you guys before, like I'm very like, you know, oh, I want to get it done. And I'm still working on changing that mindset. It doesn't grow overnight. Okay. And so, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, it just grows overnight and then it doesn't. It takes a long time for you to be able to adjust. And, you know, I'm still adjusting. And... It's getting better, but it's, man, I got a long ways to go. And I see things in my household that in areas I have to be more lenient in. And, and as a person, as, my, as being a leader of God, I have to learn to be able to do that. And if I'm not able to do that, then at that point, why is God really using me? Right? I have to be willing to adjust to what God is asking. As a leader, you need to be willing to put your pride aside, your feelings, and just accept the things that God is asking you. Because me personally, for what I've experienced, is the only way you will prosper in the right direction. It may not be easy, and even for me, it's not easy. God has asked me to do some things recently that some can't do because they may feel that they're owed something. And the simple fact is, we aren't owed anything. We actually owe him. Right. And so when I think about some of the things that I have to do and some of the things that God asked me to do and, you know, I may have second thoughts about it and I may be like, oh, well, I don't think it's really necessary. Right. And I feel like as humans, we all have that one thing that we're like, well, God, you know, I don't know if this is necessarily for me. It might be for somebody else. Right. But if you actually think about it, it's actually for you. And, you know, you aren't, you aren't exempt. If you think you are exempt, that is just your pride in the way. And you have to realize that even though you, when you make a mistake, and sometimes, you know, you know you made the mistake, and you don't want to honor it, you have to realize that you actually owe him that. He doesn't owe you anything. God has put you on this earth, right? God has put us here on this earth. And he wants us to do his works. We can't do his works holding on to things that we can't, we can't necessarily let go because we're too stuck in it. Because our pride is in the way. We can't let go. Right? And I always talk about letting go. And the simple fact is, is that we might think that God actually owes us something. And, you know, this week has really given me this message to be able to preach. And I actually, you know, felt bad about some things this week. And not realizing that, you know, even though it could be the right motive, even though it could be the right intention, it's not always right. And I think we all have to realize that, you know, how we treat others is how God will treat you in return. And, you know, I really learned a lot about that this week. And I noticed that even at work, you know, sometimes I could be very, like, you know, sometimes uptight because guys don't listen. But 
It's not really about that. You're supposed to be able to put your, put your feelings aside and actually think about, like, what does God want you to do? And, you know, I was having a conversation with APC this week, too. And, he, you know, he was basically explaining the same thing, that, you know, God's main purpose is love, right? And so how, how can we, as human beings, treat others a way that we wouldn't want to be treated, but then we think it's okay, right? It's not okay. And if you think it's okay, then one day it's going to come around, it come back around, it's going to bite you in the ASS, even though, even though I can't say the word. But I, it's just as simple as that. In the booty. Right? And so I had to apologize to some people because, you know, my actions may have not always been the appropriate actions to take. Right? And, you know, I feel like I gained a better relationship with people. And I feel like if you owe somebody an apology or feel, may have felt like you had done some wrong to one another, to another person, I think it's time to forgive and apologize. Right? And I don't think it's just for me. Pastor has been talking about this stuff for a very long time. You can't hold grudges against somebody. You can't be, you can't be so uptight because you think somebody, another person owes you, another person don't owe you, and nor do you owe them anything either. The only thing that we owe to each other is to show love like God has showed us. So why do we have the feeling to want to argue or feel like we're right in some way. We aren't. And it's actually helping me and bettering me and showing me that, you know, I have to be willing to put my feelings aside and just show love. That's the simplest thing you can ever do is show love. And at that point, when you show love, you don't think about anything else. You have a good time. You, you know, you enjoy one another. But if love is not in the center of the relationship, whether that's friendship or relationship or whatever, whatever ship, right, then at that point, it won't work. And I've been trying to do better because not for, not for people, not for anybody's approval, but doing better because I want to do it for God. And when you do something, do it for God. Don't do it for anybody else. Anybody else everybody else and anybody else is not going to give you the approval. The person that's going to approve you is God. But you don't need to look for that either. Just do the right thing. That's all it takes. And for me, I'm just very thankful to be in the ministry. And even if I didn't have, even if I mess up, right? And I'm not saying this is like a thing that I want to happen, right? But if I mess up and, you know, I do something wrong and I, I, for whatever reason, I lose the household, whatever. It doesn't... I, it's a big thing to me, but if I still lose it all, I still want to be able to worship God, right? I feel like people hold on to things too tightly. You have to be willing to, if, if all else fails, God needs to be the center. God needs to be the person you go to. If you lose your house, you lose your family, your friends, are you going to go to God or are you going to say, why, God, did you do this to me? Why, God, why is my life like this? At that point, what was it for? 
Was it for your own your own leisure or you know for somebody else to approve you? Then that actually shows that you weren't really working for God. You were working for the things that could get you the approval from him. When you should just be searching for him. And whether I do wrong, right, or so on, God's going to come for me and he's going to correct me in the areas that I need to be corrected. And God is going to make sure that I do the right thing. And I hope that when he does correct me, when he does come after me, I never become that person that's like, you know, no, it's not for me. Because then that's just going to take me all the way back from six years that I've been here of where I accomplished back to square one. And if you love going back to square one, then you have a serious issue. And it's funny, but it's serious too. Because it's, it's not worth it. It's really not. And I think you can't let things get to you when you get corrected. You can't get offended. I know it's hard not to. Trust me. I've experienced it. It's very hard not to. But why Siri turn on? I guess she wanted to hear the message too. But, um, (laughs) all right, I'm sorry. All right, let's get back to the message. Anyway, um, I mean, I forgot what I was saying. Siri interrupted me. And she did it again. Anyway, uh, I can't lose sight if God is asking me, asking me now, and what is he, what he is doing for my family, my life, and so much more. Rather than I should be thanking Him for all He is doing and giving Him all of the glory. And other things that don't pertain to me should matter because. That is, his, that is God's job and not mine. And if he needs me for anything, I know he will let me know when it's my time for something he needs for me. And that's real. Because he has done a lot. And, you know, he put me in a new season and he has people under me now and I have a wife and everything. And when I look at it, I really don't deserve any of it. And, you know, I don't really know how to really lead. Sometimes I feel like I might fail. And, you know, I don't want to fail. And that's why I try to do the right thing. And sometimes it's hard. But I don't want to be that person that keeps looking up every day and it's like, you know, I want to do the right thing and I don't want to mess up because then I'm just going to be living my life as 
a person that wants to be good all the time. And the simple fact is you can't be good all the time. Because if you don't, if you don't change, if you don't fix the areas that you really need to fix, then how are you going to teach somebody else? You're going to teach them to be, rather than to actually helping them and teaching them from your mistakes, you're going to be teaching them on how to basically live a life of happiness that you see and let them live with the things that are really not appropriate for their life. So for me, I'm tired of like trying to live like I um, want to be perfect all the time. I want to be corrected. And I want to do the things that is right. That's why when pastors came to me this week and told me things that I need to work on in my life, I didn't get offended at them. Because there's nothing to get offended about. Why get offended? Why not just change what you need to change and what you need to work on? Not only to better yourself, but to help better your family. Why hold grudges? Why do this, that, and the third when all of that doesn't really matter if you came here for a specific reason, which is God? So as I was saying, for me, I'm just very thankful to be in the ministry that I will always try my best, whether I mess up or not, whether I feel something is wrong, not right, and so on. I can't lose sight if what God is asking me now and what he is doing for my family, my life, and so much more now, rather than I should be thanking, thanking him for all he is doing and giving him all of the glory. Other things that don't pertain to me shouldn't matter because it's God's job, not mine. And if God needs me for anything, I know he will let me know when, he, when it's my time for something he needs me for. Just like he has for the past six years. For now, it's to my focus is on my household, my spiritual, their spiritual part, and learning each day and every day how to get closer with God and correcting my own mistakes and using my own mistakes as a learning lesson for everyone else. Not only for, any, for everyone else, but also for, you know, the people that I live with, even for my wife. It's not, you know, my mistakes is something that she can learn from because I'm not perfect. I know for me as well, I need to be like Deacon Senior always says, you know, you always use me, now I'm using you. I need to be reborn too. And we all need to be reborn. And every time you take every time Deacon Senior preaches, Pastor preaches, I'm always listening and I take what they say deeply. And I know for me, I agree. I need to be reborn. And Always just be thankful for the season you are in, who, has, who God has blessed you with. Enjoy your family, and also just ensure to love each other until the end. That's what God wants all of us to do. Psalms 139, 23 through 24. God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through, a th through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares. 
See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on and lead me back to your glorious everlasting way, the path that brings me back to you. The only reason why I'm able to preach up here every week and have something to talk about is because God is working on me every week. God is showing me something new about myself every week that I can work on to be better. And the progress doesn't come overnight. And I know what this, what he's teaching me now, not losing sight of the things that I need to focus on, it's going to take time. But the more that I press into his word, the more that I continue to follow his word, I know that it will get better over time. John 15, 1 1 through 11, 13 through 17. I am true sprout, I'm I'm a true sprout sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruit, fruitless branches and pruning every fruit, fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you, so you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch ser- served from the vine will not bear fruit, So your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. I'm the sprouting vine and you're my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stem from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discared. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burnt. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully in you, within you, then you ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you, demis- you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my Father. I, live, I love each, each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments. For I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. My purpose for telling you these things is that the joy that I experience will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. For the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for his friends. And that's me. I sacrifice my life for the people that I oversee. And I do my best to take care of them the proper, proper way. You show that you are my intimate friends when you obey all that I command you. I have never called you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. And servants don't always understand what the master is doing. But I call you my most intimate and cherished friends. For I reveal to you everything that I've heard from my father. You didn't choose me, but I've chosen and commissioned you to go into the world to bear fruit. And your fruit will last because whatever you ask of my father for my sake, he will give it to you. So this is my part parting command, love one another deeply. So my message to you guys is just make sure to love one another. And if you feel like, you know, you have something against somebody, I think it's time to let it go. And if you can't let it go, I think you should ask God why you can't let it go. Because once you let it go, you feel free. And I tell you this week, this message has really been pondering on my heart because I've been feeling it for ever since I sent this over to pastors. It's actually been very burning on my heart. So, And now I feel relieved for preaching this message. So moving forward, just learn to love one another and become one with God. Amen? Amen.
Amen. HD, can you close us out in prayer, please?